Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. You know, when you think about it, emotion is everything. It pilots, guides us in pretty much everything we do, right down to when you buy something, you have an emotional connection to whatever you buy. Think about it. That's why marketing and advertising works, because they push the button of your emotions and say, I got to have that, I, whatever it might be, whatever the reason is. We're, we're going to look at expressing emotion today, how we do it, why we should do it, what's the best way to do it, and how does that look between men and women? And she works with people all the time as a life and trauma coach. Jude al Khatib is back with us. Welcome. How are you doing today? I am good. Thank you. Thank you. How's your day been? It's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, when was the last time you had a good cry? Uh, yesterday. <laughs> I'm always crying. But it's not a bad thing. No, not at all. You know, we're all going through stuff. I'm going through a divorce right now. And, you know, also going with my daughter being sharing custody with her dad so it's it's a lot and i have suppressed my emotions for 14 years after my sexual abuse so this is what i do i tell people no more suppressing you gotta release those emotions and it's very healthy to cry and it's it's just uh, really sad that a lot of people are conditioned to not express their emotions and release and it's like crying is a bad thing but it's not you know you can cry you can People take it out on fitness or some people, unfortunately, take it out on anger and, you know, but releasing those emotions is huge. And I always do uh, some kind of either whether listening to like some music that helps me release or even if I'm just like randomly driving, honestly, and, you know, uh, something triggers a memory of mine that is sad, I release, I let it out and I pray. <laughs> it's so healthy to release it that there's even it's scientifically proven there's chemicals in your tears that get purged when you cry um it's and challenging challenging for men because yes. in our society there and many other societies condition to not mm -hmm. show emotion like it's a weakness yeah. yes i just had a man yesterday tell me you know, because he's being pressured, a young man, literally, it broke my heart. He is being conditioned and, you know, he wants to, in front of his friends, it's like awkward for him. Um, and I told him, like, sometimes, unfortunately, with growth, you may have to even change your friends, um, whatever situations you're putting yourselves in. If people don't want to be real about their emotions and their trauma, like I've had to change my friends. I've had to block certain people from my life because they're just not on the same page as you and you know you're on your healing journey life is life is very eventful but some people have this mask on where they're just pretending that everything's okay but inside they're in survival mode where their heart is constantly racing and I struggled with that for so long literally if I go out I'm picking up on people's energy or like I just can't handle any more stories if people are telling me something and I told them you need to make sure you release your emotions and cry. It's okay. And if your friends don't want to support you with that, this is why I'm here. I'm here for you. But he he was taking it out on the gym, but he's still struggling. And there's so much pain inside of him where he feels like he's in survival mode. And it's like your, your heart actually starts aching. Your body, I suffered with chronic illness because I didn't release. And I tell people this. I had severe eczema very bad mucus and asthma. And I'm, I'm not even like BSing you guys. <laughs> when you heal, your body literally starts feeling freer and lighter. And this is what I keep telling people, because all that stress is causing all those hormones to go out of whack, you yep. know, so you need to heal your body. We're a vessel and we're storing so much energy. That energy needs to be released, whether through dancing, exercise, crying, walking movement is medicine that's the mm. biggest thing you know so we're meant to release it we're not supposed to be storing it at all men are conditioned that way because think about when they're when they were kids 
big boys don't cry. Come on, be a man, man up to it. And there you go. Right. It's 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 perceived to be a sign of weakness, but we got to get over that. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't mean you have to cry around other people. Even you just cry on your own. If you're just feeling something, yeah. it's just like, oh, yeah, let it out. It's it's yeah. it's okay. Yeah. That's why I love having um Zoom calls with my clients or even in state college in person because um it helps to cry with somebody and then you know with I went to spiritual healing retreats so there's certain movements that you do like whether you place your hand on your heart or wherever the pain is, is in your body like you literally can release it and uh, when you have somebody sitting with you and there's like the music, the spiritual music, I'm really into it. Uh, it helps. You just start crying automatically and you don't even care about who's around you, but it's because it's me and the person with me, you know, the spiritual retreat that I went to. Nobody is paying attention to anyone. We're all trying to heal. It's very powerful. So hopefully in the near future, like this is something I'll talk about in the future, but I do really want to make some group sessions where we all face our fears and we all talk about our trauma and we all cry together because it's very, very powerful. And you notice that everybody's the same. Everybody's suffering in silence, but people are just so afraid to speak up on it, but we're all the same. We are. And just and, what you said, and, I went on a spiritual retreat this year. Yeah. Um, I don't know if like five months ago, whatever. Um, I won't go into the detail because we're not supposed to really talk about in case others want to do it, but on the third day, that's what took place, where it was a room, let's just say a room of hundreds of men grieving, yeah. Yeah. letting it out. Yes. We'll never forget it. <laughs> and it was so impactful for everyone. Um mm -hmm. and and you could be holding on to stuff from decades ago. You don't even realize. Mm -hmm. because you've conditioned yourself to bury it, to bury it, keep it down, keep it down. Ah, that, that, yeah. that doesn't bother me. BS, it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have to face that. It's, you do, because this is what I, I'm, I also help, you know, people with their relationships and men, men need to understand and women too, but for men, because they've been conditioned to not express all that anger, all that sadness, all that pain, a lot of people unfortunately take it out on their spouse or their partner, their boyfriend, girlfriend, you know? So, and then they don't realize like, oh, wait, why is my body feeling this way? Why am I getting sensitive to what this person is telling me? Because of that suppressed trauma. So it's very important to understand what's going on in your body and letting it out. And the biggest thing I have learned ever since I became a life and trauma coach. And I tell this to people since doing my spiritual retreats and traveling and investing in thousands of dollars on coaches for my healing journey. After I got raped when I was 18, uh, people need to understand that they need to sit still and literally be in tune with their body. However, society has conditioned everybody that everything's so fast paced, everything's fast, fast, fast. We don't even have time to recognize what's going on in our bodies, but our heart is constantly racing and our thoughts are constantly racing and we're in survival mode trying to make it on time for that meeting or putting our kids in school and you know making it on time for work so once we sit still and truly meditate be in that meditative state and mm -hmm. breathe breath work is huge like i literally have a tattoo here that says breathe <laughs> just for a reminder for me is to breathe and understand what's going on in your body and not reacting out of anger because there's truly something where we're our bodies when we heal it's like on a cellular level where where we're um remembering something that has happened from our past like our bodies are magnificent so it can it can remember things from years ago you know um yeah so this is something that i'm trying to make awareness of because people don't realize like they're constantly on the move constantly agitated anxious and then you're taking it out on somebody it's like why what's going on and you start realizing oh wow okay yeah this is this triggered a memory this triggered something in me before i react think and feel that's what i tell people 
everything you're saying is what I've learned in the last like three years. Yeah. I'm being I'm totally serious. Like the, 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 the value and the beauty of just listening to yourself. It sounds like ridiculous, but just be, just think, just sit. You know, I envy people from centuries ago where they didn't have all this, everything going on around them where you could just, you know, like the monks up on the hill. What the heck are they doing up there? What a boring life. Really? Just sitting there all day meditating? No, oh, it's beautiful. It's sign best, me up. <laughs> best time ever. It's like, I, I, I cherish that time. Like I look forward to, you know, wow, I got a, an hour before bed. Normally I don't. I'm just going to sit and do nothing. I'm just going to think yeah. this is great. Bring yeah. it on. Laura yeah. waking up first thing in the morning. Oh, I don't have to rush out. I have a couple of minutes. Let me just think, yeah. let me just feel what's going on there. And yeah. it's, it's almost like you're checking in with yourself. Yeah. And if people struggle with, um, their racing thoughts, like a biggest thing that has helped me and a lot of people, uh, is journaling. I, I mentioned this before in the last episode, but, um, sometimes people don't really know how to start because they're, they're, you know, people are suffering with AD, ADD and people are suffering with so many things. Um, and they don't know where to begin where, because their thoughts are everywhere. So I tell people literally get a piece of paper or a journal, like go to target, get a nice journal with a cute little pen and start journaling your thoughts, literally like you're speaking to yourself and it helps a lot and, or on a computer in a word document. Like this is what I used to do too. Just throw out all of your thoughts, all of your, whatever's triggering you, whatever's on your mind, release it. Like you're talking to yourself. And then here's another practice that I like uh, doing as well. And I'm helping people um, understand how powerful this is. It's going to sound really corny, but people need to realize how powerful this is. Okay. Are you ready? Go. Get, get in front of a mirror and start practicing self-love. And th this is like about forgiveness as well. And literally talking to yourself, facing the mirror, talking to yourself, right? And look at yourself eye to eye and talk like you're talking to somebody, but talking to yourself. Like for example, Jude, I forgive you. You messed up. You snapped at your daughter. Um, okay. You're anxious about this. And then just talk like you're talking to a friend and it's, it makes a huge difference. And then once you you're done, say, I love you. You can do this. You're confident. You're strong. You are heard. You are seen. You are loved. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, they grew up not, in, you know, depending on where, how you grew up with your parents. My parents never told me, I love you. They, my dad showed me he loves me by covering, covering me financially, you know, but he wasn't like sympathetic, empathetic with me and giving me that love that I needed. So now I tell people, whatever love you're trying and what you want, tell it to yourself. And it makes a huge difference. And hugging yourself, putting your hand on your heart. It sounds really cheesy. It's, oh, people, it works. People start doing like, it, it works. I'm not, I, I, all of the above I've heard, I practice some, the journaling thing. I keep a gratitude journal, Yeah. but I don't journal. And I met somebody recently, a man who said, I write things down. I just, I, I how I'm feeling. And he goes, here's my book. And he's got stickers on the front of it and everything. Uh, and I, I need to do that, but I need to be intentional to set the time aside because when I, I set time aside, it's like, well, you know, I'm just going to chill. Maybe you'll look on my phone or whatever. And you say, this is what I'm going to do. Even if it's for five minutes, I'm going to write, yeah. by the way, gratitude journal. I just bought one. Now I was just keeping just a basic journal. Um, and that's fine. But I found one that walks you through with, you know, different prompts today. I'm feeling, um, I express kindness today could have been better if, and it's, and every page is the same. And they have one that's like $27 out there. I found one on Amazon. That's literally $8 and it's like that mm. big and it's got a hard cover on it. Um, and I'm like, ah, what a find gifts for I everybody <laughs> this holiday yeah. season. You're getting that. Um, uh. $8 and it's such it's in, and it's even got the little bookmark, um, red paper, you know, uh, yeah. piece of fabric in it and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, j everything you're saying is, and I'm going to share something like talk about corny. There are times where 
you know, I might not have been able to fall asleep. So I put my hand on my chest and I just go like this mm -hmm. and I fall asleep. <laughs> no, it's not it funny works. at all. It does. Yeah. You need to self-soothe. People yeah. need to self-soothe. So that's totally okay. And the journal thing with the gratitude is so big because when we start programming our mind, because it's all about rewiring your mind, rewire. Oh my God. I can't talk rewiring your mindset you know once when people focus on the blessings in their life they just become in a better mood but if you wake up and you're focusing on oh god i gotta see my boss again oh i have to deal with this and oh my my, my children didn't let me sleep and i only got three hours of sleep and automatically we're programming our mind for it's like negativity and you're sending out that energy to the universe and then it's like you're gonna have a shit day you know what i'm mean? sorry to cuss but it is what it is. <laughs> when, you, when you program, when you program your mind and you wake up with gratitude and, you know, thank you for my body. Thank you for allowing me to wake up. Thank you for my vision. Like I posted, um, or actually I didn't post it yet, but I made a video, just me hiking yesterday. I was talking to the trees. I was, you know, thanking God, like, thank you for my body. Thank you for allowing me to be able to do this uh, walk and adventure and thank you for my phone for allowing me to connect with a bunch of beautiful souls all over the world. So gratitude is huge and how our thoughts, because our thoughts shape our whole life. And when we look at ourselves again, when we see ourselves, it's like if you're seeing yourself and you're disappointed in how you look, it's all about taking action. We can't keep playing that victim mindset. A lot of people unfortunately need to be held accountable and need that push. And this is what I'm here for. That's why I love my job because I love holding people accountable, but you got to take it serious. So either you choose, like how many days are left until the new year? I think 90, oh my God, it's so crazy. Like we're almost towards the new year, right? I tell people now, do you want to continue suffering literally until the new year, until next year? Or would you rather start losing those pounds, for example, of people that are trying to lose weight? you know, and every day being consistent and disciplined and, and giving yourself that self-love because that's love for yourself. So you don't have to stay miserable anymore, but people don't know how to start. and They don't realize you have to start taking action from your food choices, your thoughts, starting gratitude. And we're, we were overcomplicating it so much, but it's simple, but it's just, you need a little push, a nudge. <laughs> Until so somebody says enough is enough. I am done suffering. I'm done being in pain. I'm done with this chaos. That's what happened with me. 14 years. I was so miserable on and off like a roller coaster. And I'm did, like, okay, did you I got to get my, did you know during that period why you were miserable? Could you, could oh my did, God. you traced it back? Like, yeah, I know what that, I know what it is, but I'm just going to keep dealing. I'm just going to um, suppress the emotions. I'm not going to I'm not going to deal with it, essentially. Yeah, I was too afraid to speak about my trauma of of being raped when I was 18 and held it for 14 years until I was 32 years old, literally from 18 all the way to 32. I kept telling myself and I would look at myself in the mirror, seeing how un I would literally sabotage my thoughts and my thoughts were like, oh, my God, you're unworthy. Sometimes I would even sabotage my thoughts saying, Jude, you're a horrible mother, like I became suicidal. You know, I mentioned this before, like I, my depression got really bad. And then I started pushing myself. I got married and I focused on my career, but I was numbing my pain with, with making as much money as possible, literally six figures in my bank account. But Steve, I was still miserable. I was still suicidal. Why? Because I never healed my sexual trauma. That memory kept replaying over, like, I'll never forget that memory until I finally let it go. And that's why I talk about the power of forgiveness. We mentioned that on last episode, I forgave him. That that chapter is closed. I have burned that book. That book no longer serves me. And this is what I tell people. The past and your trauma no longer serves you. Let it go and release. However, you have to feel and cry. How did I how did I heal myself? I started kickboxing, weightlifting. I went to the spiritual retreats, talked to a bunch of coaches, therapy. I took action in order to release because that trauma was very deep. It was stored in my hips. You know, like people don't realize that's why I dance a lot and I 
and I teach women how to dance and I belly dance, like and, and anything, exercising, kickboxing, because of all of that suppressed trauma and the memories and th that energy and the toxic crap that's stored in your body. Wow, does it feel good? Now I tell people I have wings and I can fly. <laughs> And it goes back to what you said before, that all of this is in a cellular level. It's in the trauma that we dealt with is in every, every cell mm -hmm. in our body. So yes. why are you feeling sick? Why do you have this chronic illness? All of it, because you're holding on to it. But yes. unfortunately, it's, it's work. Yeah, every, it's work. I, I th this is, this is for me, everything is work. Even mm -hmm. making plans for the weekend with friends. What are we going to do? Well, how are we getting together? Who's driving? Where do you, what time do you want to meet? How are they getting there? Who's leaving? Blah, blah, blah. It's work. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Sure. But it's work. Everything, yeah. everything has an element of work, but there's yes. always a, there's a payoff, you know, when yeah. you work, you know, regular job, you get paid. So when yeah. you do this work, you get paid it's by worth being it. free. Yeah, you're free. You're free and it's so worth it. Yeah. Like it's people think it's um difficult and they don't want to do it because they don't want to face the pain and they don't want to face the reality of their suffering, but it is so freeing. And even when you release, like you legit feel like so much weight has fell off your body and then slowly you'll start realizing like it, it's incredible what our bodies can do you literally truly genuinely start healing like my eczema all of the inflammation i started losing weight my addiction to food disappeared i used to have such a huge uh addiction to food and was always binge eating i was obese you know like i lost over 30 pounds um because i started releasing all that anger towards my parents towards my rapist towards my ex-husband there was so much anger that I was not letting go of until finally I gave myself love and I forgave them. And I even pray for their healing. No more vindictiveness, no more being resentful, no more ego. It's like an ego death. You humble yourself, be free. It's godly. This is what I tell people, like literally be holy and godly in order to set yourself free. My ego death has been the biggest present that I, that I can give to myself. We are so egotistical, unfortunately, that we're trying to be better than ourselves. We're comparing ourselves to sure. other people, but but we're all wearing this mask, pretending that we're happy and we're not. We're all equal. We're all one. I tell people, and I sing this in my piano. I pretend that I know how to play the piano, but I don't. <laughs> and I say, <laughs> we're all one big happy family, one big community. We're all equal. We're all one flesh and flesh warm. So forgiveness, letting go of your ego and healing. And you can set yourself free. No more bondage from anything that's weighing you down. There's always been that image where somebody climbs the mountain with a monk on top of the mountain and like, what's the secret of life? What is the secret? This is the secret of life. This is, this is what it is to live, to be free and let that stuff go. Um, and I think it's when I heard the term, this doesn't serve you. Those people don't serve you. Friend told me, like four years ago where I need to make some changes. Um, it came clear like, Oh, ah, okay. You know, let's face it. Nothing changes. Life is going to change. Nothing is going yeah. to last forever. So be yeah. prepared for the change. And sometimes that involves making changes with the people in your life too. Um, yeah. Jude, how do we find you? Is somebody uh, going through some stuff? This resonates. How do they connect with you? Connect with me on Instagram. It's Jude underscore love 2024. J-O-O-D underscore love L-O-V-E 2024. Or you can contact me by email. I'm always checking my emails and DMs. The Lending Ear 2024 at gmail.com. Or on Facebook, Jude underscore love 2024. Um, yeah. I'm always on my computer. I'm always responding. So contact me, book with me. I'm very flexible with my schedule too. I know I shouldn't be working at night, but sometimes I work at night because this is what happens when you're a business owner. You're always working, but I love my job. So like yesterday I talked to that man and it was a very good conversation. So mm. I am here to help anybody that's struggling. Love it. And I love the name Lending Year. That says it all right there. Yeah. And, and you're available 
unless it's one of those moments that you're taking for yourself to listen to you. <laughs> Just going to say. Yes, 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 definitely. Because if my cup them. is not filled, yeah, like I can't pour love onto others unless I fill my own cup first. And what I do with my work actually is I ground myself. I'm always in the forest, grounding, meditating, singing, talking to nature, hugging my tree friends. <laughs> I, I got to do that more often. Not even kidding. I, yeah, I, I, there's a tree in should. front of my house and I miss that tree. <laughs> I, I'm, I've Talk literally, I've it. gone, I, I have, don't laugh. I've gone up to it and I felt it calling once. I need, I need you yeah. I need to touch the tree um, yeah. because it grounds you. It's just, you know, but once yeah. people figure this out, yes, it's woo woo. I get it, but. It's not you, woo woo. It's real. You start <laughs> feeling so better. Real. You start feeling yeah. better. Thank you for today. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Steve. I'll talk to you next week. Yep. Bye. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.